guess what the major issues in the news today are? One of them is certainly the cabinet reshuffle of the Tinubu administration at the federal level is certainly one. Daily independent. Anxiety grows among ministers as presidency confirms looming sack. Says FG to use tax funds allocation to fund student loans. Won't intervene in NNPCL than go to refinery petrol price war. The details of that story you'll find on the inside pages. The Nigerian News Direct is talking about the same thing. Cabinet reshuffled. Tinubu to reject cabinet based on ministers' performance. Stories on page two. Expression mounts for accountability within administration amid delivery scrutiny. More of that story you'll find on the inside pages. This Nigeria newspaper has Tinubu to sweep out Deadwood ministers. Residency confirms plans to reject cabinet. This could lead to shoving aside officials who haven't pulled their weight after more than one year in office. And that only picture on the front page is of Justice Kudirat Hekereekun taking a bow at the Senate chamber after screening as the substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria in Abuja yesterday. Also on the front page of the Guardian newspaper, same story, shake up 11 ministers, senior official may go as Tinubu reshuffles cabinet. Details of that story on page 6. Still on the president, the front page of the Nigerian Tribune has fuel price. Tinubu won't intervene in Dangote NNPCL TIF. As according to president, he confirms cabinet reshuffle imminent, says 30% TED fund resources will go to student loan support, unveils plans to introduce NIN registration for foreigners. The new Telegraph newspaper has presidency. FG won't intervene in NNPC Limited Dangote Refinery fuel pricing controversy, confirms imminent cabinet reshuffle, oil theft, NNPC Limited, others uncover 161 illegal refineries and pipelines. What do you make of that? Well, the details you'll find on pages 3 and 8 of the New Telegraph newspaper this morning. If you look at the front page of the Vanguard newspaper, it's a rather concerning story. Panic in 11 states as release of water from Ladgo Dam begins. And look at the rider. States activate measures to mitigate impact of flooding, set up IDP camps. Confusion, tales of hardship as relocation order comes into effect as some communities refuse to obey. That's to be expected, isn't it? But it's about lives, isn't it? Look at the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper. Hardship. Civil servants go to work twice a week. And someone said, even feeding is difficult. Find the details on the inside pages. Only Lagos over Osho approve off days. We pretend we don't know what's happening. That's from a director. It'll lead to low productivity. As a control, an analyst find the details of that story on the inside pages of the paper today. The Daily Times newspaper, Africa's role as raw mineral supplier, suddenly defined its misery. As coming from the president, says extracting raw materials without processing locally deepens continents under development. Details on page two of the paper. Blueprint newspaper, as CGN, I'll be remembered for integrity, zero tolerance for corruption. That's coming from the new CGN, KKR Kun. Warns judicial officers against frivolous ex parte orders, injunctions. Seeks end to pre-action matters at appeal court. The details continue on the inside pages of the paper this morning. Business Day newspaper, Nigeria to widen tax net over revenue shortfall. Taps 30% of tech fund income to fund narrow fund to deploy tax tools to drive jobs exports. The details of that story is right there on the front page and it continues on the inside pages of the paper this morning. And these are some of the papers we have for you today. number of stories there to look at in the newspapers this morning. But what's piqued my interest is this headline from the Guardian newspaper. In fact, we've been talking about this particular headline for quite a bit. Even before we came on air, uh, a lot of people were actually just sitting down and talking about it. So let's start off with the Guardian newspaper. We can have that newspaper up there for people to see what the headline is from the guardian 
11 ministers and senior officials may go as Tinubu reshuffles cabinet. We'll see more on that from page six of the Guardian newspaper uh, this morning. I want everyone to be a part of this conversation. Actually, if you can, uh, from your experience uh, as being a Nigerian and, and looking at what's been happening in, in the different ministries and parastatals in the country, maybe you want to talk to us and let us know what you think the president should do. In this cabinet reshuffle, of course, Mr. Bayo Nanuga spoke about it yesterday. In this cabinet reshuffle that is being planned, we've been wondering when it would happen. Will it happen? What kind of review is going on? What are the results of that review? Well, while we wait on the answers to those questions, uh, maybe you should pick up a copy of The Guardian and let us know either on YouTube. A lot of you like to chat with us on YouTube. You can send us a message on YouTube. You can actually send us an email, talk, talk to us on, on X at Sunrise Daily Now. You know, tag all of us. Let us know what ministers do you think should be given the boot? Who hasn't been doing his bit, you know? And I heard yesterday, you know, when they said, you know, the, the, talk to the Nigerian people. That's what the president said to these ministers. Talk to the Nigerian people. Let them hear what it is that you have been doing. Uh, a friend of mine giggled and said, we're about to be inundated with interviews. It's possible. But you should have made those interviews earlier. <laughs> those interviews should have been coming earlier. A lot of people didn't want to speak, you know. Uh, but, you know, the, the cabinet reshuffle, the, the one from the headline, 11 ministers, senior officials may go as Tinubu reshuffles his cabinet, page six. Uh, has more on that and the pictures of some people on the front page of the guardian i want to be able to do the details but i won't get yourself a copy ayo what are you looking at this morning well um i really don't know where to pitch my tent this morning kayla i will not even i won't even <laughs> deceive myself because you know the issues on the front pages are they are, they are kind of repetitive that conversation, that issue of um, ministers being shuffled is something that we've been talking about for a while. The question you want to find, you want to ask is how significant has that been in the, in the entire space of things? Now, we understand from what you also said that one of um, the president's appointees is the one in charge of the KPIs of the ministers in the past one year. So the question then is um, how much politics is going to influence or politicking is going to influence the decision of the president. And when I heard that story yesterday, I said to myself, oh gosh, the horse trading is going to start now. And then the people who are going to whisper something into the president's ears are going to say something and all of that. So how much horse trading is going to happen? How much political value or not is going to influence the decision of the president. Um, I guess we'll wait to see, right? We'll just wait and let the president make up his mind about that. But there is something very important that the president also talked about, and that is what you will find on the pro front page of the uh, Daily Times newspaper this morning, talking about Africa's role as raw material supplier solidifying its misery. Now, what's in, in instructive on the front page of the Daily Times is the writer. It says, extracting raw materials without processing locally deepens the continent's underdevelopment. Now, just take one instance, Kayla, and dear viewer, one instance, cocoa. We, we, we make cocoa here in Nigeria. We plant, we plant them, we harvest them, and guess what we do? We export them to other parts of the country, to other parts of the world, Switzerland and the rest of them. And guess what we get back? We get processed chocolates from them, way more expensive than they ever would have been here. And I'm, you're wondering why you know, these things are expensive? And that's just one of several you know, um, instances. What is wrong with us being able, God helping us, to process, to scale up our capacity to be a producing nation and export these things ourselves. And that, as, I, as I said, just, that's just one. There's also a, a raw material called gum arabic. It's here in Nigeria in abundance. As far back as about 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, there was a, an international gum arabic conference held in this country. And we have, and it's, one, it's an extremely valuable mineral resource. And Rather than kill ourselves over what's happening in Zamfara and other parts of the country, there are so many other mineral minerals that we are blessed with in hundreds. 
So can we just do ourselves a favor and take the president's advice, starting from Nigeria, and rather than kill ourselves over the raw materials that we have, actually maximize them, add value to them. It's one of the cardinal objectives of the president. Add value, value added uh, production. That is one of his focal points. I guess we'll see in the next one, two years what happens to this comment that the president has made. That and a number of other things you'll find interesting. Now, we're getting into our conversation, the rest of our conversation this morning. But before we do that, let's take a few messages.